Hello everyone, this is Mike Gutierrez, the retired farmer and today we're going to... Let me check. It's not ready yet. Uh, today we're going to show you everything that you need to know about raising quail. Quail is, uh, to me, the perfect pet. It's small, it doesn't take much space, it doesn't eat much, it produces a lot of eggs, and at the end you can always eat it too. But the whole thing starts with the little ones. And I have an incubator. I had some eggs here that were supposed to hatch today. Let's see what's happening. And this is what we have. There's a million of them. So now we have to take them out of here and put them on a, in a brooder. See, that's a little moving air. I have some eggs here in the, uh, in the egg turners. I can use the uh, incubator for both. Don't pay attention to that. That thing is bad. Okay, so we'll, we're going to take this little fellow here and show you how I do this. So then I bring them over here. And the first thing I do is I dip them in the water. Just give him a couple of gulps of water so that he knows where the water is. And then I drop them here in the food so that he knows where the food is. And this here is a, uh, a heat lamp sort of thing. It keeps this entire ceramic thing heated so they can stand around it because they're going to need a lot of heat at the, the, the very first week or so. So I'm going to do that with every single one of them one by one. And then after they've grown a little, like here, I can pass them to uh, another one which also has a, this is the famous heat lamp. It, it screws in like a light bulb, but it's just a ceramic heat. It doesn't give any light. So when I put them here, they already uh, have feathers and they can take the, the coldness of the night. Before that, they can lose body temperature and die very quickly. From there, I bring them over here. We try to keep the ratio of male to females like maybe 5 to 2, 10 to 4. Pure watering. The watering is uh, easy to do. If you just water a bunch of cages with the same with the same container. You fill the container every day, the water comes down here by gravity and it feeds all those. See these? All these are males. You can tell the males because they have their copper uh, chest. All those copper chests are males. The females, let's see if any female wants to show up. See, that's a female. That one's a female. That one back there is a female. They have like a shredded thing in the, in the chest. You can see that that one is a better example. That's a perfect female there. They just require a little 18% uh, water and right here I could put probably five to ten more they don't need that much space How about the males ratio to the females if you make it less than five to two the females will gang up on, gang up on the males and bite their eyes out they go straight for the eyes I've taken maybe four or five of these out of here completely blind. I have to take them and separate them and then they heal. Right. That's my white one. I still don't know if it's a male or a female, but it's beautiful, so I'm keeping her or him. So this is all you have to do. You feed them, you make sure they have water, and you collect the eggs. And then 
uh, like the males that I have separated there. Uh, the other day I just butchered six of them and had a nice uh, arroz con pollo or arroz con uh, quail. You need six to, uh, to make the equivalent of maybe one chicken. The cages don't have to be big. They don't have to be tall because they sleep on the ground. They don't perch, they don't, you don't need to put anything high for them to sleep, they sleep on the ground. And when you use the half inch by half inch mesh, all their poop goes all the way down. They're super messy eaters, they just shake the feed until they find the right size one that they like. And in the meantime, a, a bunch of it falls out. So when you put it high and you put it inside a chicken cage, everything that falls out, the chickens will eat on the bottom because it's the same feed. So nothing is really wasted. I would say they waste maybe 30% of what you feed them. I, say, I guess they're picky. They want to have the perfect size uh, morsel or whatever you call it. If it's not the right size, they just shake it off and throw it out. Right now I have maybe 30 eggs per day, 25 to 30 eggs per day, and it's not even the, uh, the laying season yet. I have sold some of them, but most of them I have given away and, and we eaten a lot bunch of them at home. But I don't know if I, if I will have more, even though I just hatched about 50 of them. So we'll see. But they're very, they're very fragile. They will, a uh, bunch of them will die along the way. Like the last time I, I hatched maybe 25 and I ended up with, with this. Look at this guy, he wants to leave. Get back there, come on. Get back, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. Thank you. So here we are. We hashed maybe, I don't know, 20, 25. The temperature in here is almost as warm as it was. Some of them are more energetic. Some of them are more lethargic. Uh, they're busy bodies, but hopefully they will. Uh, I'm gonna leave that light on for until I'm here, and then before I leave, I'll turn it off so they're not so energetic and they don't lose so much energy. Uh, at this point, they need to uh, just rest and recover. All right, so here's everything you need to know. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, bye. See you in the next one.